Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia Pilot into the universe of Chinese. Um, this is second day in July, and I'm continuing to do this one single Chinese character a day. I hope you enjoy it. I put a lot of thought to it, um, and this way we just deep dive into one single character to see uh, how it, it's made up with, like what other meanings compose this one meaning, and eventually in contemporary Chinese, how it can be paired with multitudes of other characters and make multitudes of meanings. It's a very fun project. Okay, so yesterday we talked about the yin, right? It's sweet. This is a sweet and a speaking made up of music. Um, Eventually, it extends to non-vocal music, but this sweet speaking comes came from this vocal music from singing, right? Okay, so today we have that in, we already have it yesterday, right? If now we have a new element added at the bottom of the music, it's heart. You would think like a music would naturally come from heart, right? Uh, but here the language creator paired the concept of music this sweet speaking or singing with heart, like the heart sing, it almost poetic, right? Like what make heart sing? Um, okay, so this E, it sounds slightly different from yesterday, right? Yesterday music is in, it's a flat tone. And today it's an E, it's a falling tone um, and ended with an N added to the yin, the Otherwise, it's an in, wait, hold on. <laughs> I think all, all of them. Oh, okay. Remove the N, actually. In is the one with the N, the nozzle sound at the end, and the E is without it. Okay, so E, when it comes with the heart, then it becomes complicated because it was used as a description of a cognitive function. Um, because heart character was a convenient symbol as a part of a human organ that's sort of related to thinking function in the past, or more appropriately, the feeling function of, of people, right? So there we go, we have this heart, the music of the heart. Um, and Chinese use that to mean intent. Um, Chinese have this distinction of intent, yi, and yan, which is um, this part, whole part, without a speaking thing. So when we're talking about uh, without a sweet thing, without a horizontal line in the mouse uh, at the bottom, the that speaking it is a pair, is it's a corresponding corresponding concept of intent, because the intent is the heart speaking or singing. It's inside. It's non-verbalized, non-expressed thought versus yen is a tool, a communication tool. You talk it out to some other person. You made your intent known. So this intent, this yi and the yen, Chinese has expression mean, uh, called yi nei or yen wa. Nei means inside. So yi is our inside non-vocalized words or speech inside versus yen is externalized, uh, vocalized intent. So they are a pair existing in this way. And the Chinese, you can see uh, by making this di distinction, made it to Chinese users to, to be aware, super <laughs> aware of the two, um, almost like a spheres that you have this big internal conversation or monologues that you didn't share with the rest of the world. And actually Chinese are very cautious about when, what, how much to speak. Many, many books about uh, speaking or communication uh, in ancient teachings uh, talk about that. Um, so we now see Yi in contemporary Chinese. A contemporary translation, when it paired to English, it can map to so many different meanings. Uh, okay, when we have yi si or yi yi, it means meaning. Uh -huh. And then when we have a yi tu, this tu is almost like a desire, like an unsaid design or scheming or plot. So when it paired with another plot thing, then it fixed into this 
um, intention is you clearly know what you want to do. You just didn't say it. That's intention. And then significance, e, e is uh, like extended meaning of something. It's not just here and now. It is a future and a much, much bigger picture. So that's e, e. And then we have intent, again, internal, uh, unsaid purpose. So it's almost like purposes. Uh, indeed, we have uh, e, xiang. Xiang means direction. So where you want to go, that's the intent. And then purpose, again, yong yi. Yong yi is like uh, you're, you're using this, like a consciously be aware of the utility of your intent. So that's purpose. And then idea, uh, we have zhu yi. Zhu yi means the main, main intent. So when you verbalize your main intent, that becomes idea. Or you can keep the idea to yourself, right? So uh, it, it didn't really satisfy if you say it or not. But the zhu yi means your main idea because you can have a thousand thoughts and ideas, but the main ones are formulated as the final thoughts, right? That's the idea. Okay, and sense, um, again, we have a yi or yi yi. It's, it's kind of a peripheral meaning of meaning, right? Meaning and the sense, even in English, they can be interchangeable, but with slight connotations. And it also depends on what other besides these Chinese characters, there's a two, two pairing of Chinese characters um, in the context with other, more like in a full sentence, and then it can be become a sense more appropriately or meaning. Okay, and then implication, yi, wei, wei means taste. So again, this is a nonverbal function. When you have a taste of something, it's a sense, but then we couldn't, we didn't say it. So that means it's unsaid. It's a implication for, for future or for, other party or something like that. Desire, yi, yuan, yuan is a wish. When you have this intent and wish that become desire. And again, wish, okay, and the thought, uh, let's see, e, e, e. okay. We don't really have uh, a pairing of, uh, we can see thought in contemporary Chinese use a lot of a si xiang. That's, uh, you see the heart functions everywhere because this, again, the running of ideas in your mind, uh, the thought, um, are, are paired with heart. I mean, that's universal. And then uh, fancy, huan xiang, well, we paired with huan. Huan, uh, in one episode before we talked about how it's a kind of a mirror image and then flipped. So it's a kind of a distortion of reality and uh, it's a delusional. And when you pair that with, with thinking, then that becomes fancy. But here, when you you can express it in yi yuan as well. So this is something your own thinking, your own, you know, projection of your own wish to the world. And that is not real and that's fancy. So we have this intent. I translate it as heart music. So music from the heart, it's unverbalized uh, where you want your internal goal or desire or, you know, purpose. All the all the different uh, translations that I show you early on, um, and it came from the heart music. I view it very poetic. So I'm just putting this picture to show somebody who has the will to do something. They are going to do it, even if it, the process can be hurtful. And that's the intent. Not because you have this music in your heart that you want to do it. Okay, catching to the principle of thinking by one word. Anyway, Sophie, see you next.